Welcome, Queen Anne's County. Uh, I'm Commissioner Chris Corcorino. I'm uh, Commissioner Steve Wilson. And we're putting this together to give you guys an update on where we stand with the COVID vaccine rollout. Uh, we've had some press releases that have gone out, some other information, but we're trying to get the information to you in as many ways as possible. And that's why Commissioner Wilson and myself are here today. And maybe Commissioner Wilson, you can start telling them about uh, the progress we've made so far with the rollout. Yeah, we got uh, a few shots in right before Christmas, and by the next week we were up and running and busy getting those shots out. And you have heard nationally that states and localities have fallen behind and not gotten their shots into the public. That is not the case in Queen Anne's County. We got rolling right away with our excellent EMS emergency guys and the health department, Dr. Ciatola and uh, Scott Haas. And uh, by now, by last week, we had risen up to the eighth best county out of 24 in the state of Maryland. And today we're in a tie with the number one county for having gotten every shot that we are provided into the into the into the arms of the public and that condition got going so quickly that we've been able to write the uh, governor and the secretary of health of the state of maryland asking them for more vaccine because we felt that if we got it out in the most timely way we'd be able to maybe up our quotient and get it out to the general public even more quickly than the other counties so your government is a hundred percent on top of the situation here and so one of the questions that we hear from people is when do i get my vaccine and um what group do i fall into so the groupings for the vaccine is criteria that's provided to us by the state um, and the priority list, we'll put the graphic up there for you, but 1A is the healthcare workers, residents and staff of nursing facilities, first responders, public safety and corrections. 1B is assisted living, uh, other congregated housing settings, adults age 75 and older, education and continuity of government. 1C is the adults age 65 to 74, essential workers in lab services, agriculture, manufacturing, postal service, and other similar services. The phase two will be adults 16 to 64 at increased risk of severe COVID-19 illness due to comorbidities. Uh, it will also include essential workers in critical utilities, transportation, food service, and similar uh, customer-facing uh, roles. In phase three, you'll have the general population, including healthy adults age 16 to 64. Now, within some of these categories, the way the state is interpreting them, it's a bit fluid. So we've been going back to the state, trying to get some guidance on um, different um, industries and sectors to see where they might fit in here when there's not a clear definition. And we usually get a pretty good response back from the state quickly. Uh, I think, Commissioner Wilson, some people want to know is, how will they know when we move to a different stage? Well, we move from one stage to the next when either our health doctor or the state determine that we are uh, appropriate to rotate into the next state. We are just about to go from 1A to 1B, which will broaden the category in the sense that we will now be doing assisted living. Uh, 1C comes next, which is uh, Commissioner... Corcorino mentions are the uh, uh, seniors over 75. And once we get into that rotation, we will be using every conceivable mechanism to make sure that every citizen in Queen Anne County is informed of when their rotation comes up. We're not going to we're going to be very careful to make sure that computer literate and people that don't have access to computers are told by various mechanisms, and maybe you can give them a little heads up on what that might be. Yeah, so one of the more recent things that we've done is we have established qacovid.org. Um, we have that domain name, and that will be set up and point you directly to the website that will have the information for uh, getting up-to-date information about what phase we're in. Uh, we will be using a lot of our different messaging services that we have to push out the information to the citizens so that they know when we've come to um, their phase. You'll see some messaging boards will be out on the road soon, giving more information, for example, to direct people to qacovid.org. Um, we'll be social media blasts, press releases. We'll be reaching out to different organizations uh, within the community, business organizations, um, 
social clubs to make sure that they know to get the information out to their members. We're really going to be approaching this with sort of a scattergun approach to make sure we're getting everybody that we can as quickly as we can. Yeah. As the vaccine becomes available, we, as I said a bit ago, wrote the governor, we're trying to get more vaccine, and the minute it comes, we will move ahead and get this into people's arms, and you will be informed by every mechanism we can come up with from text to maybe even people's cell phones, uh, public announcement, radio, so that you will be told as we become aware of exactly what that rotation is, we will get that information to you immediately. And we want you to know that the government of Queen Anne's County is 100% up to speed and there's no constriction whatsoever of getting this vaccine out on our part. And so people know the, the vaccine that we currently have been receiving in Queen Anne's County is the one manufactured by Moderna. This is the vaccine that requires two doses, 28 days apart. Now, it's very important that once you get that first dose, that 28 days later, you get that next one. It's a very small window to make sure we get it in for the maximum effectiveness of that. The way it's working right now is, for example, for the 1A groups, they're getting a, a website link to register ahead of time to make their appointment to go to one of our vaccine clinics. Um, they'll put in some information about themselves, including their uh, telephone number and their email. They're getting follow-up messages uh, about how they're feeling after the vaccine. Yeah. Um, and this will happen for several days after the vaccine because we're monitoring for any adverse effects. Yeah. Fortunately, other than uh, just minor things you would expect with a the vaccination, there have been no major adverse reactions by anybody in the county, and that's a very positive thing. Um, many people in the county have been vaccinated and it has been safe for them. Uh, as we're moving into the, the phase of doing the second dosage, what's gonna be very important is that we're getting enough vaccine in the door. Yeah, it's uh, good news that we're already beginning to get from the state the first round of second shots from the very first people in healthcare that got their first shots. And I want to reiterate what uh, my fellow here has uh, said, that there have been nationally and in this county absolutely a minimum of any kind of reaction to this shot. This is, we are really important that the public understand that if you don't get this shot, if you don't as a group of people come in and get your shot, it's gonna be very hard for us to get up to herd immunity. It's gonna be very hard for us to reopen the schools. It's gonna be very hard for us to operate the government in a way that we can confidently go into the public and the public can interact with our figures if, if people don't get the shot. So we're most strongly urging you to come in when your opportunity comes up and get this done. Yeah, it's a very important, the way you combat something like COVID is disrupting the transmission. Everybody knows about the social distancing and the masking that was meant to try to disrupt it while they were coming up with the vaccine. The vaccine is one of the most critical ways that you can disrupt the transmission of COVID-19. Um, and just getting 20 or 25% of the population vaccinated Will, will not be sufficient to disrupt it. We wanna get back to sort of the life as normal and that requires as many people who are, are possible to get the vaccine. That's a, a really important fact about the way that the vaccine is gonna operate. Yeah, uh, one of the facts that uh, you should know is that there's probably a natural uh, antibody in the public such that 25% or 20 or 25% because of either having been exposed or just natural resistance, will not get this virus. But we need to get that number up from 20, 20 or 25% to 60%. So if 40 or 50% of the public don't come in and get this, we are not going to be able to make Queen Anne's County the healthful, wonderful, safe place we'd like to have it in the middle of this summer. So that's why it's so important for folks to come in as it becomes available and get those shots. And that helps not only with, with schools opening and staying open, it helps with our local businesses so that this becomes a place. If Queen Anne's County is known to have uh, a high distribution of the vaccine, that it becomes a more welcoming environment for people to come here in the summertime, come to our restaurants and our local businesses. Um, it, the, the concerns of it go ac across the board. Very good, sir. Thank you.
We'll be having additional um, videos with other commissioners, keeping you updated for the progress of the vaccine distribution. Uh, right now, I think maybe it's about 500 doses a week that we're getting, and we're hoping to ramp up to get to the point where we're close to 5,000, because if you understand that there's gonna be the first and the second dose, there is a, um, a lot of vaccines that we have to get out, and the goal would be to get them out in a short duration as possible. So your participation in helping to get your dose as soon as you are eligible will be really helpful for the community. So one of the things that we have been working on is not only the distribution of the shots at the current time, but this effort is going to have to continue by the county from now right on through the middle of the summer. And it's going to have to continue at such a rate that the county is able to provide, get the public in and get shot something like 500 people a day because we have to get half the public done, it would be 25,000 people, two shots each makes 50, 60,000 shots. To get that done by the middle of the summer requires that we get an operation rolling that's getting out, you know, a couple thousand shots a week. And that's quite an operation. So it's not only just getting our current shots out, it's building a uh, mechanism whereby we're able to keep that process up without uh, depleting our, our emergency uh, paramedics or the health department who have their normal work to do. We need to get, uh, we are in the business now of organizing crews to make sure that we can continue that effort at that rate and continue our full county operations. We have the best emergency uh, technicians in the state of Maryland and we want to keep that whole operation running 100% at speed. and. Uh, so we're going to be building an operation that can keep this effort going full tilt right on through the summer. And we also want to take the time to thank the citizens of Queen Anne's County. Our numbers for hospitalization, transmission, um, unfortunately we've had some deaths, but our numbers compared to the rest of the state um, have been remarkably lower. And that's because of the diligence that the people in Queen Anne's County have put into following the guidelines of, of respecting your neighbors, social distancing. Um, and if we can carry that through the vaccine, Queen Anne's County is gonna come out the other end of this faring much better than the rest of the state. And so we thank you for the sacrifices that you have made and we know it has not been easy.